The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone. Thank you for attending today's webcast, Autodesk Vault Go Beyond the Basic, presented by Matt Lane, Director of Consulting Services with Hagerman & Company. This presentation is being broadcasted in a listen-only mode. You can ask questions by typing them into the questions panel on the side of your screen, and Matt will address those at the end of the presentation. At the conclusion of today's event, when you exit go to meeting, you'll be prompted to fill out a short three-question survey. We ask that you take a few moments to provide us with your feedback. Lastly, all attendees will receive a, excuse me, a certificate of attendance and a link to the recording of this presentation. Matt, whenever you're ready, you may begin. All right. Thank you very much, Bradina. Yeah, this session probably will be around 45 minutes or so, just a little housekeeping information on that. And just to kind of outline what we're going to cover and who this webinar is designed for. The webinar is primarily designed for people who either have or are familiar with Vault Basic in order to gain an understanding of the incremental features and capabilities that are available in the Vault Workgroup and Vault Professional products in order to get a feel for whether those products are something your company might wish to invest in. Uh, of course, I think this uh, seminar will probably also work for others as well who, don't, uh, who aren't in that mold, uh, but did want to kind of outline exactly what, what the webinar is most targeted toward before we begin. And probably most of you out there are familiar, at least a little bit, of what the different levels of the Vault product family are. Of course, a lot of you may be already using Vault Basic. And Vault Basic originally came out, it's probably getting to be about 10 years ago now. And we at Hagerman & Company have been involved in the product since its inception. Vault Basic is really a part of the Autodesk design suite and is designed just for the CAD users themselves, a very basic check-in, check-out tool. Since it's part of the CAD software, only CAD users have access to the features of Vault Basic. And maybe more importantly, only CAD users have access to the files in the Vault if you're using Vault Basic. And then optionally, Autodesk offers the ability for customers, if they choose, to step up to the higher level products, Vault Workgroup and Vault Professional, where Workgroup adds in uh, features like release and revision management, access for non-CAD users, a whole host of features we're going to step through. Vault Professional also adds in engineering change order management, bill of materials, ERP integration, multi-site replication, a whole, whole bunch of stuff that we'll step through here as we go. A couple of other things on the differentiation. As I mentioned, Vault Workgroup and Vault Professional are separate products that you can buy and make available to anyone. By default, both of those products and licenses are concurrent or floating. So maybe you've got 20 people who need to access the work group or professional from time to time. You could buy 10 licenses installed on 20 people's computers, and then any, any 10 of those people could be in at one time. So you don't have to buy a license for each possible or potential user. Another big thing to understand is, as opposed to the CAD suite, where you may pick the CAD tool that's correct for each individual within your company, with Vault, you select the level of Vault that's right for your company as a whole. So you wouldn't have these five users with Vault Basic, these five users with Workgroup, and so on. You pick it's uh, more of an enterprise system or a client server type system. So you pick the level of Vault that's correct for your organization. And this chart breaks things down further as to the differentiation between the different levels of Vault. So as we work through the presentation here, we're really going to work down through these items as we go to get an understanding of those, those features. And I, I think uh, probably the easiest way to do this is to flip back and forth a little bit 
between the PowerPoint and going into the actual software itself. So we're going to have um, the presentation is going to be a combination of PowerPoint, the actual live software itself, and then a uh, little multimedia as well. So we want to try to break this up and keep things as interesting as, as possible throughout the session here. And so one thing to take a look at here, in fact, I'll just do this, start off with the file revision control and life cycles. That's a feature that comes in with, with Vault Workgroup. So if we jump over to our Vault Professional Client, Look there. Those of you who are familiar with Vault Basic, this interface is going to look very similar. That is one key thing with Vault. It really is one product line. Other times you've seen it from other vendors, and you've probably seen it from Autodesk as well, where the product line is more of a marketing thing, where different products have been purchased and then put under one umbrella. With Vault, it really truly is one core product, one core architecture, one core user interface. So it's very seamless if you ever ever choose to upgrade. And of course, those of you who are familiar with Vault know you have your get, slash, check out, check in, undo checkout command. That's part of the Vault basic. And then every time you check in, it creates a new numbered version. And you can see that numbered version here listed in my uh, column and you can of course choose which columns you display but then when we get to work group and professional you also have the revision property which that's a system property that's tracked by work group or professional and then that will increment via the change state command uh, where Volt the higher levels of Vault add a release functionality. So an engineer may check in and check out multiple times over the course of a design process, might check in just to get things saved to the server, might check in a part so someone else can access it on their within their assembly, a whole host of reasons. So you may check out and check in multiple times through the course of a design. Then at the end, you really want to release it as a released revision. There's really with Vault Basic, there's no differentiation there. With the higher levels of Vault, it will differentiate between a released revision and a work in process check-in. And you can see that in these three columns here. So this file has been checked out and checked in seven times. It had two released revisions, A and B. And with revisions, you can use a letter or a number scheme. And then you can see its current state is released. If I do a change state on that, you can see in this flexible release process which we've designed, there are multiple different states that you can have. And these document life cycles, which control the file state and the releases and the revisions, they are totally customizable. You can have as many different document life cycle states as you need have those assigned to different types of files, and so on. And that's done here in the administrator. I have administrative rights, so I can go in, in here to behaviors, life cycles. You can see I've defined different life cycle workflow processes for different types of change, different uh, types of documents. We can edit any of these. You can say what category of documents they apply to. You can have as many different states as you wish. You can control what transitions are possible. So I can control that, you know, nobody can take something directly from work in progress to release. It has to go through review. Um, so if I edit this, I can control the security there what individual users or groups of users are allowed to make what transitions. Also then, under the security tab, I can control who can check out a file. So right now, engineering can check out a file if it's work in progress, but maybe if a file is in review, they lose the ability to modify. 
and then we can also set it up for purchasing or manufacturing, they can only read or view files that are released. So you can really control who can change what files when, who can view what files when, so you don't have people, for instance, on the shop floor accessing something that's work in pro process and not approved and manufacturing from it. So I think Autodesk did a really good job in their design of this particular aspect of the software. Let me jump back to the PowerPoint see what's next here. Uh, I'm actually going to jump down a little bit and talk about file and folder security since that really kind of ties into the revision control and life cycles. With Vault Basic, your security is controlled. If I go here to uh, via roles and permissions. And you can assign users to different roles, so like document consumer can only do these things, document editor level one can do these, these additional things. You can see as we go higher, the list gets longer. Document editor level two has a few more functions. Administrator has everything. And in Vault Basic, this is a global setting. So if you put me in document editor level one, I have those rights to every single file in the vault, which may or may not work for your organization. So work group and professional, they add in file and folder level security. So you might want to make me document editor level one, but then for this folder, maybe this project, this product line, maybe you've got marketing documents in there as well you dial me back to read-only access to that particular folder. So that's another, another nice feature of Workgroup and Pro. Uh, the next item listed in the PowerPoint, if we go to Vault Settings, is automatic file naming and numbering. So you can set up different file and item naming and numbering conventions. Uh, most of these are basically like 20 dash, take out the next number, 300 dash, take out the next number. Uh, this one, it does HAD, and then you can pick something from a drop-down list, um, like maybe a material, a drawing size, you know, anything you want. Then it takes out the next number. So in all of these cases, you can customize as many different file naming and numbering conventions as you wish. Then, let me go ahead and create a new part here. Okay, I got the right, yeah, I've got the right project. And I'm going to dazzle you with my inventor skills here on that work plane, great circle, extrude it, <clears throat> then go to my vault browser, which those of you who are familiar with vault basic know, that works basically the same, but then when I check in a new file, I can pick the naming and numbering convention I want, and then you can see it automatically named it 300-105. Or if I try one of these others, try that one, can't remember, yeah, okay. So here it'd be HAD, pick a value from a drop-down list, then next, next number. And of course, you can have different naming and numbering conventions for different types of documents. Uh, access for non-CAD users, that's basically the work group or professional desktop client you can have installed on anyone's computer. Reporting, there are report templates built in. Let me see if I can grab us a good one here. Go to parts. If I go to file and report, 
I've got these different report templates built in. Our DLC is a standard Microsoft report tool format. Uh, let's just say I'll pick ECO by state. We haven't really talked about change orders yet. So you can do reports on about change orders, files, items. Hopefully I pick something good here. So not a lot of detail. So change orders by state. Looks like both most of them are released. Um, that doesn't show a lot of detail. If I do a report, say change orders, ECO detail. Let's give that one a shot here. Yeah I, I, um, yeah, I didn't have a lot there. Sorry about that. Let me try one more. And then these reports can all be, again, customized. You create any others that you want. So here's another one. Showing more, this is actually a 74 page report, print out all my file information. Server based DWF publishing. We haven't had a lot of customers use this. Those of you who are familiar with Vault Basic know that when you do a check in from inside of AutoCAD within, from within Inventor, it creates a DWF file internally linked to the native CAD file in the vault. So that when you do any viewing in the vault client, you're actually looking at the DWF, which gives you the full ability to zoom in, zoom out, rotate around, all that good stuff. So it's a really small, compact, fast file. Now that sometimes the DWF publishing can take a bit of time on the client workstation. So with work group and professional, you do have the ability to move the DWF publishing to a central PC that has been set up to do that DWF publishing for all users. This probably only makes sense if you get maybe 10 to 20 or more users to offload that because the uh, to set up the server-based DWF publishing does take a vault license and it uh, does take a CAD license to do that. So it probably only makes sense for larger installations. And we, Honestly, we haven't had a lot of people people, people do that. Uh, batch plotting is something that some of our customers have used and works with work group and professional. And batch plotting, I can access it here. Uh, some different ways I can do that. If I pick an ascent, I can go in. Let me just go ahead and hit plot. So I can just grab that file. I can go out and add additional files. I can so I can go out and browse and select additional files to add to the list. If I go to design document. I can add a PDF to the list, so this will do both CAD and non-CAD files. I can also add folders. If I add a folder, then it will add all the files in that particular folder to my list. I can also go out, um, if I say add related file sheet, and go out and pick an assembly, This will go through that assembly and find all of its children and their drawings and add them to my plot list. So it allows you to batch plot an assembly. 
and then get you can see all their IDWs, all the IDWs and DWGs related to parts or subassemblies. And then also you can see here you can go in and edit the settings on any of the files. Uh, then hit submit. That'll print them all. You can also save plot lists, that kind of thing. You know, you could also have, if you want to do some customization, have an external application that built a plot file that you then just read or loaded, read or loaded here. And then here it's giving me the opportunity to save my plot list for later recall if I wish. Enhanced backup and AD integration. This is more on the IT side. Uh, AD is Active Directory. One limitation of Vault Basic, which does hit a few of our customers, is that the only backup option available with it is to do a full backup. And this only becomes an issue for people who have either extremely large data sets with a lot of files in their vault, or maybe they've got the vault server software and their Microsoft SQL server software, which controls vault on separate servers, and maybe the network connection between the two is not that fast. But in some cases, the limitation of only being able to do a full backup We've had some customers where it uh, takes more than their off hours to get a backup done. Where with Vault Professional, it adds the ability to do incremental backups. So maybe over the weekend, you schedule a full backup to be done, but then during the week, it just does incremental backups overnight uh, also, Vault Pro can do hot backups, so you can actually back up while users are working. So that, for a few customers, that's been a biggie. And then Active Directory integration is another one that can be important if you get into larger installations. With Vault Basic and Vault Workgroup, users are created, users and groups are created and managed inside of Vault. If you got you know 200 users, those users need to be created and managed inside a Vault. Also, you know your IT people would need to do that in Windows Active Directory. So if you're adding, making you know, larger organizations would you know have more people coming and going than a smaller organization with Vault Professional with Active Directory integration, your IT only needs to manage it within Active Directory, and then Vault just automatically reads what's already been set up in Active Directory. Multi-site replication is a feature of Vault Professional, and that's either a hugely critical thing for organizations or something they don't need at all. If you've only got one site, then multi-site replication is uh, you know, nothing your organization would need. But if your organization is such that you need to share large CAD files across multiple sites, multi-site replication can really be a lifesaver. Because probably most of us is, have tried to open CAD files remotely, you know, either you know, downloading them off the internet, or if you do have a wide area network, trying to open a CAD file from a server that's at another location, you know, AutoCAD bad inventor with the larger file sizes and multiple interrelated files, you know, that's almost unusable. Where with the multi-site replication that's part of Vault Professional, those files are automatically replicated across those locations. In fact, let me just go ahead. Hopefully, we won't get too much. Now, nah, I'll. I'll I think I'll just stay where I'm at here. Might make more sense. Um, those files are replicated to servers at each location, so each user has fast local access to each file. But then all the check-in, check-out, and file changes are automatically synchronized and controlled. So if I'm at site two, 
and say, check out this file. Users at all the other sites see that that file is checked out to me, so they're not making conflicting changes. Then when I check in, my file changes will then be replicated to the other site, and then the file would, of course, be, you know, marked as checked in and available for others. You can also lock files to sites so that, you know, a file can't be checked out at another location if they don't have permissions. We've, been, we've set up the Vault multi-site replication for a large number of customers and has worked, you know, very smoothly each time. It's quick and easy to set up, very reliable. Uh, for those of you who are using Vault Basic, and think you might be interested in multi-site replication. Uh, the only other additional requirement that comes in is that all levels of Vault will work with Microsoft SQL Server Express, which is the free version of SQL. However, to do multi-site replication, you do need to have full Microsoft SQL Server in place. So that is one thing to keep in mind if your organization is interested in that. Also, the multi-site replication is a core part of the Vault Professional software. You don't have to, it really comes with the client, uh, so you don't have to buy any. You don't have to buy any additional server software to make that make that workable. Query View and Print Web Client that is available with. Vault Professional. And the nice thing about this client is that it's free. You know, if you buy five seats, just for example, a Vault Professional, so your CAD, non-CAD users can be checking in and checking out, using the other features here, that gives you the ability to have an unlimited number of people using the web client for search, view, and print. So sales, customer service, purchasing, the shop floor, whatever, you know, they will then have full access to the Vault for Search View Print. And then also remember we did talk about uh, with the life cycles and the security that's available there, uh, the file and folder level security, combining that with the web client, you can make sure that people using the web client aren't able to view stuff they're not, not able to see that to see yet. Uh, just to get an idea of what that looks like, here's a case where I'm going to go to uh, a movie, a short movie, to show you the new Vault 2015 web client. If I can flip over to that. Yeah, get myself plugged in here. This is just a couple of minute movie. Arisk Vault Thin Client. Updated with a modern look and feel, the Arisk Thin Client extends the benefits of Vault document management to the entire work group, including non-CAD users. Simple and easy to navigate, users are able to collaborate in one central, secure location where they can view, search, print, and mark up. The Project Explorer view enables visibility to documents stored in the vault as well as the ability to view its contents in multiple ways. Customize your view or as the administrator configure a default view for your project and team. Drill down in the folder contents and use Quick Search to easily find your files. Advanced Find allows for additional search parameters to refine those searches. Click on files to view their details such as properties, history, dependence, and additional places where the file is used. Select the parent file to see the file structure. Select the thumbnail to download or view it right from the browser, allowing users the ability to measure and mark up those files. The bill of material view and the item detail page will track material history, where it's been used in attachments, and associated CAD data. Include your non-CAD users in the engineering measure process with Autodesk Vault Thin Client to help increase collaboration amongst your entire team. Yeah, you know, like I said, that was just kind of a quickie there. Uh, jumping down, 
in addition to the Autodesk Vault web client, users of Vault Professional also have the option to use the Microsoft SharePoint integration in a similar manner. I don't know how many of you out there might, may or may not be familiar with SharePoint, but it is Microsoft's um, kind of a base level document collaboration and management and sharing tool not really suitable for CAD. It's really more suitable for office documents, maybe PDFs, photographs, not you know, kind of complex data you've got with CAD. But what Autodesk gives you is the ability from SharePoint to see the vault. So similar to the way they showed in the movie how you could access that data with the vault web client, you can do the same thing with SharePoint. Autodesk provides what's called a SharePoint web part it will install on your SharePoint server, and then SharePoint users will be able to search, view, and print files that are actually in the vault, and really do it in a seamless manner. Uh, so when they run a search, the search results might show files that are in SharePoint, some that are in vault, then they can click on any one of those, view or print, and it's all very seamless to the user. And that's actually free and unlimited as well like the Vault web client. I'm going to go to engineering change management next, which is also a part of Vault Professional. And if we jump back to my Vault client, uh, like I mentioned, you can see the user interface is basically the same between all three levels of Vault. Now Vault Professional does, you, does give you some additional tabs here. Customers is something I added. Uh, custom objects, custom data types is another feature of Alt Pro. Uh, but then item master and change order list are standard tabs and features of Vault Professional. If I go to change order, you can see it'll give me a list of my change orders. But here's every change order that I've actually done. Now I can change to a view and say only show me the open change orders. When you create a new change order, it'll take out the next name and number. So we can see that here. And then you can have change order properties and display those properties as column headings, however you wish. And then you can search, search for change orders the same way. And then if I do pick a particular change order, I can come down and I can see all its in detailed information, title, detailed description, due date. You can customize your change order properties. So however you, you need to track and report on change orders, you can add those custom properties there. And these can be filled in by typing, drop down list, that kind of thing. And then your change orders have a workflow associated with them. And there's two different standard workflows built, built into Vault Professional. You pick which one you want to use. Uh, the other one doesn't have the check state. So it's not fully customizable. You pick which one of the two flows you want to use. However, you can have as many different routing lists pre-configured as you wish. So maybe different people are assigned to a change order normally based on the product line, your location, the customer, the type of change, and so on. Uh, so you can pre-assign one or more people to each one of these boxes in the routing list. And then as the change order routes around, if I right click, I can say respond, and then my response options relate directly to the flow, its current location in the flow, and my role within the change order. So if I hit submit, then it's going to transition from work to check, and it will also then send out email notifications. So whoever is assigned on the routing list to be the checker would then get email notification, open their email, click on the link, and it would take them right into Vault Pro to this change order so they can review everything. Also, Vault users will see the change orders for which they have some work to do on their work list. Uh, also then importantly, the change order acts as kind of like an electronic file folder 
that pulls together all of the files related to that change, whether they be CAD or non-CAD files, whether they be uh, files you're creating or editing, or just ones that need to be there for reference. So if I'm the CAD user, when the change order routes to me to do some work, you know, I can just click on the link in the email, click on the link in my work list, and then I've got all the information at my fingertips, and then here are the files. They've been gathered for me, linked in from their home folders. You know, I can open them, check them out right from the change order instead of having to browse around, search around, and so on. Then on the Files tab, that will also show the records there for editing. But on the Files tab, you can also attach any other reference files as well, like photographs, customer emails, markups, in this case a PDF, anything else that's needed for reference for the change order. And then if I do, you know, if I say go to that file, from the file side of things, you also have a change order tab, and it will show you any change orders that any of the files have been assigned or linked to. So again, you see everything is really tied together, as we mentioned. Also, Vault Professional will get into items, bills and material, and ERP integration. And that's all done from the item master side. So if I click on that, and let's go to a particular assembly. So this, uh, this was an inventor assembly. We did the command to assign items, so it actually passed it over to my item master within Vault. Since it was an inventor assembly, it pulled the bill of materials from that assembly with my file names, the part numbers, it pulled the quantity, one on everything here, uh, but it would pull the, the proper quantity from the inventor assembly and then grab any inventor I properties or vault properties that have been entered, pass them to the item master as well where a CAD or a non-CAD user can view the bill of materials. So it really gives more bill of material visibility and access to the non-CAD user. You can also edit the bill of materials. So if I go into edit mode, I have the ability to add items to the bomb. So maybe there's non-CAD items that get added to your final bomb by non-CAD users. That can be done here. Um, you can add an extra spare part. You know, change the quantity to two on one of these. If you want a, a, a spare part that gets shipped to the customer, if you have like a standard list of spare parts for your equipment, uh, you can also remove items. And then you can do a compare bill of materials that will compare the original to the edited and flag where quantities have been changed, items added, items removed, <clears throat> and so on. And then if we do export items, that leads me through a wizard where it will export my bill of materials to a file format that's been configured to work with my ERP system. So, you know, the file format, whether it's XML, ASCII text, comma delimited, space delimited, XML, and so on, and then also it in includes the correct field, you know, part number, quantity, description, material, unit of measure, whatever fields your ERP system needs, so that then your ERP system is able to read it, read the bomb in, instead of someone in that department having to retype it. This is going to be obviously a small bill of materials. Here's my mapping that's been set up. It'll give me a preview here. And if you're familiar with the CSV format, you know that's an ASCII text file, uh, but it's also an ASCII text file that's openable in Excel. So if I go open that up, there is that file. 
you, know, you wouldn't have a huge time savings on this one since it's only four items, but imagine some of you may have bills of material that are hundreds or thousands of items long, which takes all that typing time and possibility for error has been avoided. And the final feature I'll mention here, Autodesk Buzzsaw integration. I don't know how many of you out there are familiar with Autodesk Buzzsaw. It's been around a number of years. It was uh, one of the early and is one of the most popular cloud-based file collaboration and sharing platforms that are out there. You know, there, there's others that are out there now like Google Drive and Dropbox, which are essentially free you know, to upload files, download files, share them with other people. Buzzsaw does that, but it's much more sophisticated in terms of its user management and security, its ability to view. CAD file, so it, it's much more robust in terms of the management side of things, and then much more robust in working with CAD files, whether they be AutoCAD, Inventor, Revit, and so on. <clears throat> and then you can use Buzzsaw by itself, you know, uploading and downloading files. When a new file is uploaded, it sends out email notifications. It keeps audit trails. You know, to know who's accessed the system when, who's um, downloaded a file, and who hasn't. You can do all that manually, but with Vault Professional, you can actually set up synchronization with a mapping between folders in Vault and folders in Buzzsaw, so that, for instance, you can say when a new file comes into this folder in Vault, it'll automatically post it to Buzzsaw and then people who are collaborating with me on this project will get email notifications for downloading it. If one of my outside partners uploads a file to Buzzsaw, then it can be set so that particular Buzzsaw folder syncs down to a particular folder in Vault. So it's got that integration with Buzzsaw. Also, for each license of Vault Professional you purchase, you get a license of Buzzsaw for free that's included and then you know if you need more bus style licenses you can you can purchase those. So I think you know I really wanted to you know focus on that differentiation uh, between Workgroup and Pro and what they add above and beyond Vault Basic. Uh, so hopefully everybody on here has gotten a good idea of that. I think at this point we can flip back and I can go to my go to meeting panel and see what questions people may have typed in as, as we've been going through the presentation. Uh, also then people can now take this time to add any other questions that they have to there. So let me flip over to the screen where I can see that. And go to my question panel. Like we do not have anything yet. So we will go ahead and hold this open here. Hold the webinar open to give people some time to ask questions that may have come along. I don't have any questions so far. That means I've either done a really good job or I bored everybody and they fall asleep. While we're waiting here, Berdina, do you have any other comments or instructions? Um, no, I'd just like to thank everyone for attending today. And like Matt said, we're going to keep the lines open for a few more minutes to address any questions that you may have. Um, if you come up with a question after we end the session, you can reply to um, 
the confirmation or the reminder email that you received from GoToMeeting, and that will be sent to us, and we can route that to Matt um, to get your questions answered. Um, also, just a reminder, when you exit the session, you'll be prompted to complete a short three-question survey. We ask for your feedback on that. And um, within 24 hours, you will receive an email uh, from GoToMeeting with a link to the recording of the presentation. So if you have questions, go ahead and ask them. If you don't have any questions, you may now disconnect. Okay, here's a question. Uh, so we have never installed or used Vault. It is our understanding there was a Vault Basic webinar previously. Would it be possible to get a recording of that? Bradina, do you have any information on that and if that is available? Yeah, all of our um, previous webcasts recordings are available on our website. If you go to um, www.hagerman.com and click on events and then on the left hand side of your screen there will be a webcast archive and you can find it there. All right, thank you. Well, if there's not any other questions, I think we'll probably go ahead and wrap up. Yeah, as mentioned, if you do think of something later, like Verdina mentioned, you can feel free to contact us with those. But otherwise, I think here we'll go ahead and wrap up. And once again, thank everybody for attending. And let us know if we can be of service to you down the road. Thank you.